Welcome back, everyone, to another uh, Dark Souls 2 lore through. I did quite a bit of leveling up uh, since um, the last time, and um, I also reallocated my stats so I can uh, do a wield power stance. Um, if you don't know this game well, basically, if you have enough stats for, uh, to wield um, the weapons you're using, um, and you have two of the same type of weapon, you can press and hold Y or triangle, and it'll kind of bring them into a new stance. And I think this is great. I think this is a great feature of um, Dark Souls 2. I think they went overboard a little bit with uh, uh, Dark Souls 3, um, although I still like Dark Souls 3 as well. <laughs> But yeah, so I can attack with the left or the right. And you can see I'm using the washing pole and the Uchi Katana. And that washing pole is really, really large. I love it. Um, but yeah, you could attack left and right like this, or you can go and put it into power stance, and then you can still attack uh, with your left. But then instead of attacking with the right now, when I attack with the right, then we get these kind of dual thing plus a strong attack. That's the one for the katanas. Um, anyway, I also ground down Santir's spear that we got last time. Uh, so now it's broken. Um, and if you don't know what this weapon, it's it's like a spear when you first get it and then it's got this head on the end of it. And it's got 500 durability. And if you break it down to zero durability, it like changes into like a twin blade instead of a spear, and it now will never lose durability. Um, but I love the weapon, and it doesn't scale at all, so if you uh, make it raw, I mean, it's just super powerful. Um, in fact, do I have a raw stone? I do. I might go do that real quick. Um, but anyway, I also leveled up all my gear, which is, uses Twinkling, and so does the Santir Spear, so of course I wasn't able to upgrade my Santir Spear, unfortunately, so we'll kind of, we'll do the dual wielding right now, and then we'll uh, get to the Santir Spear later in the game. Um, uh, let's see, I'm going to level this up now while I'm thinking about it. Um, and then uh, I can read the items of things that I collected during farming or of stuff that we just didn't get to. I have to. Alright, so when we get Sinew Spear, we want it to be raw. There we go. Okay. Go back to the doors of Pharaoh. So as you can see, I also went to the second bonfire here, which is just in front of a a boss, and we'll just get to that at a different point. So I completely cleared out the doors of Pharaohs to get the twinkling titanite and stuff in there, so I could at least level up my Santir spear a little bit. But anyway, uh, let's read some stuff. So I did get a black steel katana uh, while going around Iron Keep, uh, and this has some unique lore on it, so this is cool. Black steel katana wielded by Elan knights, one of the sturdiest types of katana preferred by masters of the quick draw. In the heyday of his land, the old Iron King fancied entertaining dubious and eccentric guests from faraway lands. Most of them were charlatans, but among the riffraff was an unusual knight from the Far East. He trained the Iron King's men in the sword, in obeisance to his new lord. So I think what's interesting is we, we do know that the Iron King um, kind of sought to learn more about the soul, similar to Vendrick. Um, however, he kind of got distracted by his power, by the iron, basically. And he started kind of living uh, what they called... Um, what, they, what was the word they used? Hedonistic life. So that led him to entertaining dubious and eccentric guests. And of course, this is the first mention of Sir Alon, uh, who we will kind of see and, and uh, 
get to know a little bit better later, but um, it is interesting to uh, um, just get some more of the backstory about the previous king of that land. So Then I got a Gurmax, I think from going through Doors of Pharaohs or something, I don't remember. Uh, an axe used by the nomadic Gurm. At first glance, this axe appears crude, but with further examination, one sees the fine craftsmanship of Gurn blacksmiths. Quite heavy for a human, but flung around with reckless abandon by the Gurm. Um, it's possible that Macduff is a Gurm. He kind of maybe looks like a Gurm. I'm not sure. Uh, and then I got a Mastodon, Albert. Uh, the Mastodon is this, like, elephant thing in here. Um, Halberd of the primal knights that defend Dranglite Castle. The brutish and mighty primal knights wield this halberd like a feather-like twig, but to the ordinary warrior it is, a it is a chore to even hold up, owing to its great weight. Terrible experiments were said to have ha taken place in a hidden manner in Drang Lake. The mastermind presiding over the deeds was thought to be Lord Aldea. Um, yeah, so that's interesting. Um, the primal knights that guard Drang Lake Castle, we haven't been to Drang Lake Castle yet, are associated with Lord Aldia, it looks like. Um, I don't know if we've talked much about Lord Aldia, but we certainly will be talking about Lord Aldia, um, as we go on. So, um, but yeah. It, there are terrible experiment, experiments happening, which sounds similar to what was happening with Seath. So, uh, and then we have Santir's spear, a spear that was embedded in a stone statue. According to an old local legend, a great spear was used to defeat Santir, uh, the walking statue. Perhaps it's this is that very spear but it will be difficult to utilize such a thing in the manner of a spear. Your only choice is to swing around and smite foes about the head. Anyway. Um, and I believe that that's all I got. Oh, I did get a twisted barricade from the Doors of Pharos. A hex that distorts local space uh, for a brief moment. For a brief moment, spells are deflected. Hexer Gilia never took an apprentice, making it unclear how his spells were passed down. It is even possible that hexes came from another source entirely. I mean, we've seen a lot about Galea. Um, and we also know that there were two kind of origins of hexes. Well, we've seen two different kind of origins, or I guess, what do you call it? Two different... Uh, points in which, I guess, branching points or something, but the first one was back in, um, um, what was it called? Ulusil. You know, in Dark Souls 1, we saw dark, or hexes. We didn't really learn what they were called until, um, now. But then we also heard that Falcon kind of rediscovered the art of hexes and was kind of thought to be heretical in Malfia and kind of went off and did his own thing. We also know that Strayed has worked with, I mean, has he worked with Dark's, Dark Hexes? I think he might have. Um, he certainly has done with Sorcery and Pyromancies. Um, anyway, we'll learn more about that later, but anyway, so it, it could be said that and then obviously we knew about Galea, who kind of rediscovered them from Ulusil. So it's possible that like Falcon is a whole other line. Um, I'm not sure how these specific ones were, you know, passed down. Um, and that should be it. All right, with all that out of the way, let's get through uh, this next area. Uh, there used to be a mimic chests there. I don't know where it is now, so. There's four mimic chests in the game, I believe. Well, I don't know if that's a thing, but I just know that there's basically... Each one has, like, a piece of the dark set. Um, so, I, I guess I think there's four. 
Warrior of the Nomadic Germ. Warrior Armor of the Nomadic Germ. Uh, most Germ descendants refuse contact with outsiders and live with a sense of deep contempt for those who exiled them. Hmm. So that was a big guy. And then we have kind of this guy here was a little bit of a different weapon, which looks like an anvil on a, on a chain. And uh, it said that Garam had blacksmiths or whatever. So yeah, we have the Garam warrior and the Garam. Now it's interesting, this Garam warrior looks like the inf infantry set for, for the Forest Fallen Giants guys. But anyway, let's read Gurm. The stocky Gurm are kind-natured, but humans deemed them impure and drove them underground. Clearly. I suppose I should have checked this if this was the, uh... Uh, and we read Dragon Charms, right? Yeah, we got five of them. So they were exiled underground. And look. A couple of things. I mean, first of all, we now see that um, Gavlon is a Gurm. He's a Gurm warrior. He's a very simple guy. Probably same with uh, others. We also see these statues. We saw two of them in Majula. So, not sure what they're doing here, but it's we should we should maybe think about that as we move forward through the game. Make deal. Yeah, and I don't think he says Gavlan with Gavlan what? With Gavlan. Gavlan. Okay, I just want to make sure Gavlan. to talk to him. And he sells the same stuff. You go. Home. Yeah, yeah. All right. So here we can see the Gurm kind of throw these things that are too heavy to wield normally. Which is kind of interesting. Let's see if I can get this. used to fall off the edge with me. Got another one of these germs here. Just a regular one. He's polishing up his uh, anvil. Sure, these don't say anything new. Oh, we already had some. Yeah. Okay. Those guys can drop chunks, or they used to be able to. Some nice, uh, nice thing to get. So, to me, this uh, evokes the uh, Lord Vessel. I mean, as I say, evokes, um, and then the pat, and then the stairway down to the first f the kiln, and then this would be like. I mean, I guess up there would be Fire Lake Shrine. Uh, I've never heard anyone talk about that. I just. It just, ev I know, as I say, evokes it. So I wonder if that's a subtle reference or not. Brightstone Cove Saldora. Um, 
Interesting. Yeah, I know things are very different here. So once again, we have the same burning of bodies like we did in Huntsman Cobbs. Um, and it looks like there's some protection here, as if uh, they were defending against the germ somehow. Um, I mean, I suppose I will... Oh, there's falconers here. Royal Army Campsite. Um... Alright. There's the big pigs here. Huh. Alright. Well, I don't know the best way to do this area. This guy um, is a worker, and he was like harvesting corpses for souls, it looks like. Okay, been spotted. Oh wow, they run really terribly. Okay, we can kill those guys in one hit, that's easy. Um, I need Ben Hart to uh, survive uh, boss battles, so we're going to uh, wait until everyone's dead before we try and... Oh, interesting. Gonna try and not get these pigs to come over. Okay. Sounds like I've failed. I know these pigs can be a tank. Drop the sil silky stone, the smooth silky stone, um, because that's what they're mining over here. Uh, that's that one. Okay. Okay. So are there two pigs still? Does that, does that guy have a pig sound when he dies? Is that what that is? Or the pigs make sound when they kill them? Okay. I'm up there too. Interest oh, that's where I'm trying to go. Interesting. Usually in Dark Souls 2 they just have items at, at the bottom of a pot, but that one was like on a corpse that fell, which is very similar to Dark Souls 1. I knew I heard another pig. Not really sure what the purpose of this is. Like, if 
that was a well at any point, like... Oh, great. If that was a well at any point, like, why is there no water at the bottom and why does it lead to this home? I don't know if that's... Makes a lot of sense. All right. Oh, nice. You can hit him when they're down. Didn't know that. That will make stuff you faster. Oh, did he shoot two arrows? That's weird. Ooh, they used to drop sunlight metals. That's a really interesting place to uh, fight a mimic too. Oh great, I should have. Okay, cool, I got their armor. Or, or, does Moglin sell his armor? I don't know either. So they can bite you from the back. <laughs> That's a new feature. Ugh. If we've read these before or not, but okay. So yeah, I'm kind of confused. I mean, I guess there's enough space, but. Well, that's the stuff that's usually in all these keep, I think. Alright, let's read a couple of things now that we're safe, quote-unquote. Sunset Staff. Staff of the Lost Land of Ulifus. Ulifus. Sorcery dedicated callus cannot be used to cast hexes. The crystal at the tip of the staff greatly augments spell strength. Although a finely crafted staff, made even more effective by its crystal, the brilliance of which has been polished over time with powerful magic. So, I guess that's a descendant of what uh, Seath figured out, because it had crystals involved. Shield, small shield used by Vulgan falconers. falconers. Appears like a glistening gold falcon from afar. Domestic Vulgan soldiers were fam infamously timid. Oh yeah, we did read this, I'm pretty sure. Um, they're rumored to be untrusting of others and demanding of prompt full payment, but no wonder they deliver much more than they are paid and are well aware of it. Hmm. Uh. 
In practice, they serve as bodyguards for the affluent elite, and they serve well such that nobody dares scrutinize their background. So yeah, I mean, I guess this was, um, I, you know, they, probably what Moglin was selling. No one knows the true identity of these men who are said to freely manipulate dark. Old foreign legends describe them as poor souls who chase the lost art of life dream, which we know all about. Alright, so how much am I going to get? Alright. How's that go for this area? So yeah, we can see here that this is a mining area. And that there's bright stone all around here. We can see an area that looks kind of like uh, the undead church. And uh, we'll find someone there that's a little bit familiar from the Undead Church as well. Um, okay. So, I guess when you mine in this area, you also can get those huge stones. And I don't know why they're propping them up. So I, don't, I wonder why the falconers are here. If they're like doing anything partic in particular. spiky area down there and there's some workers in there this whole area over here which we're going to explore all right one kind of cool aspect of new game plus is that there's an enemy that rises out of this pit here which is kind of fun But not for new game. Large Titanite Shard. Okay, I think this is it. Although, let's go kill the spiders, because why not? Although, I don't know if the spiders keep coming infinitely. Probably not. Oh, interesting. Is that always there? This one. You can't uh, lock on, which makes me think that they're potentially a. Uh... <laughs> this 
So yeah, I guess that just summons spiders. I guess they'll come from over here too. Nope. Okay. Spiders can be pretty damaging. Oh. Yeah, a lot of the spiders in here drop like um, weapons and stuff. Because they used to be. Ooh! Well, this is very different. Or maybe it's not. Maybe I just don't recognize the door. Priestess stuff. Well, this is what looked like the undead church before, from afar. Let's look at the priestess stuff. Thought I heard something. <laughs> Traditional headpiece worn by Drang Lake clerics. The clerics of Drang Lake have retained their normal nominal state status throughout the ages, but were always at arm's length from the royal family, as if their existence was little more than a formality. It is customary for clerics to wear different garb depending on their sex. I think we read this before. Although I think it maybe not. Um, but we can hear something weird in the other room. Uh, since we needed to beat his quest line, and this is about... Okay. Uh-oh. Um, this is like one of the most, uh, the easiest fights ever. Um, I'm gonna summon him for it because, you know... Might as well use a repair powder. Because, uh, we're not doing too well. Hopefully, the washing pole. Because the washing pole obviously breaks faster than the Uchi. Because it's really long. But hopefully, that won't become an, a huge obstacle for us moving forward. Uh, if so, I can always just go straight to the Uchi. I'll have quite a few more hits on it. Um, ben Hart. Fugo. Hugo. Jugo. I don't know. I think it's... I would say Hugo. So I'm going to say that for the rest of the playthrough. Hugo. Yeah, him and his... Apparently Moonlight Sword. Moonlight Great Sword. Which means he might have a connection with Seath somehow. Don't fall off the edge, Ben Hart of Hugo. Walk far away from the edge. Because that's going to be the only thing that's going to kill you. <laughs> It certainly isn't going to be this boss. Huh. There's a bunch of spiders in here. I wonder why they didn't come down. And these are torch uh, sconces as well. A little different in this area. Alright, let's take it on. Prowling Magus in the congregation. Oh 
not gonna go die at this fight. <laughs> so he knows dark magic, and he's actually dressed a little bit like Rowena or whoever. Um, invaded us in uh, the Huntsman Cops. Okay, good job. Oh, I'm gonna get a tight night slab for that fight. Which, uh, yeah. Okay, so this, as I say, really evokes um, the Undead Church. Uh, has this interesting uh, image of a woman here. I do note that it has a talisman in her left hand, which, you know, we don't use talismans, we use chimes now. She's reading a book. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. But similar to the uh, um, Undead Church, Are these guys gonna kill me? There's a guy dressed in the partner garb of Velka. Similar to, oh, and a great size. <laughs> and a bonfire ascetic. Wow. Cleric small shield. Um, similar to Oswald of Kareem. Again, it's very evoking of the first game. Let's take a look at we had this fight handed before, I think. Used to harvest grain. Normally used as a farm tool, not a weapon. Well, it makes sense that it's here. I suppose there's farmers or whatever around. Small shield used by clerics on pilgrimage. Enchanted with a somewhat fragile blessing that allows spells to be deflected by pairing. And we learned all about uh, the clerics and the way of white. Not specifically Lindelt, but the Way of White, maybe Thurland, maybe Lindelt is Thurland, I don't know. And they had undead hunts and how that all started with uh, uh, Paladin Leroy. Anyway, let's talk to this fool. Something seems to be bothering you. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes, I can tell. It is written upon you, doubts about something you did. Nope. I am Crom. Regret, anguish, disillusion, bewilderment. What wonderful gifts they are. Together, they are the essence of life. Don't you agree? No. But now, you're lost, bewildered by your own actions. I'm quite good, actually. Thank you. You poor little thing. Yes, yes, how time and frail are we. But if your heart is yet sincere, your sins will be forgiven. Now is the chance. Demonstrate your sincerity to me. I wonder if sincerity and sin have any root words. <laughs> okay, so we haven't sinned in this case. Um, we have not uh, attacked any NPCs or anything. But let's see what he what he's selling. White priest headpiece, traditional headpiece for Drang Lake clerics. Uh, the clerics of Drang Lake were not viewed with particular reverence, and their positions were only preserved as a nod to tradition. It is yeah. So I think we read something similar to that. Yeah. And he has the poison bite rings. Um, we, uh, we read one of those before. He sells dark trotches. Again, talks about St. Elizabeth. Or troches, maybe. 
Great heal, we know about that. Punishment, the miracle is used by the resolute Lindelt cleric knights when fighting on the front lines. Crescent prayer, elementary miracle, yeah, we knew that as well, because that's similar to heal or whatever it was. Dark Souls 1, force, emit force. Now what do these say? Pushes an elementary miracle Pushes nearby foes back, but leaves them unhurt. Does not directly cause damage, but can be highly effective. A miracle derived from force. Throughout history, there have been many examples of imitative miracles. When discerning original from imitator is nigh on impossible, which is, which hardly matters. Heavenly thunder. Emits lightning in random directions. Scholars bicker over whether this is the original lightning spear or a derivative. One can never gain full control of the power of the gods, but with a little favor from Lady Luck, this spell will destroy your foes. Well, it isn't the Lightning Spear. I can attest to that. It doesn't function like it. Perseverance. Lindell ascetics are sent to distant lands for proselytizing and self-training, but many of them decide not to return. Well, we saw that with uh, Lycia. And wreath its caster with a pure veil and scraps of life. An esoteric spell created by Navlon, an infamous exiled sorcerer. Yeah, so we, I don't know if we read this one, but we read uh, this story about Navlon. Um, how he was a heretic, how he is trying to uh, restore it. Resurrection. Interesting. Anyone can be forgiven as long as he is sincere. No matter how terrible this is, surely we all deserve mercy. Yes. Anyone can be. Okay, so another Whenever you are ready. Another quite empty uh, NPC in Dark Souls 2. Alright, usually I end it at the most convenient bonfire. However, I want to go now and finish up the Pate Creighton storyline uh, before we ended up here. So I'm gonna go and kill. Um, I'm gonna go kill Pate because I got all his gear, and then I can get Creightons. Okay. Oh, he's pretty. Oops. Don't want to aggro Creighton. Take him out, Creighton. Don't. Okay. Okay. Charcoal pine resin. And I get Pate Spear again and the Ring of Thorns again. I believe I got those already. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting he is a uh He's got that a reindeer on his chest. Thanks for your help. He was no push on mine. No, he had a lot of health. Yeah, take this and go to my bolt hole down the way. Bolt? Oh, that's gross. What's there? It's yours. Just a small token of appreciation. Yeah, these are for you. Nice. It did me well. Just take them. <laughs> I don't know how he can give me those when he's still wearing them, but... You did me well. Okay. Um, yeah, and I don't believe killing him gets you anything. However, I mean, I think that's the end of the story. But I'll leave him alive just in case there's something new or something. Okay, well, let us uh, run back to the bonfire, and then we can uh, 
read all this stuff and call it an episode. <laughs> Alright. What was that door? Opening and closing, it sounded like. Okay. Uh, do we get anything else? We got Pate's Spear again. Yeah, nothing new there. Atypical steel mask. It does, its design resembles that of the Knight Order of the Eastern Land of Mera, but with some odd differences that catch the eye. Perhaps it is a finely crafted imitation. Well, we know that uh, the, the order, the quote-unquote the order, is what everyone kind of joins in Mera when they uh, want to fight, because Mera is constantly in battle. So um, this would be what um, they looked like. However, it does mention that it could be a fake. So, similar. Yeah. And then it, yeah, so we got two Ring of Thorns. Okay, I just, I just wanted to make sure. Alright, cool. Well, that was uh, the beginning of Brightstone Cove, Zeldora, whatever <laughs> it's called. Um, join me next time so we can finish the rest of it. Bye.